this is Sean. Happy New Year and happy tax season. I'm glad to be here with you. Another tax season. And today uh, we're going to go over the expense organizer. So if you have been to my website, which is taxdown.net, that's the website. <clears throat> taxdown. Dot net. If you went to the website and you have a business, on the website there under tax forms, I have these two sheets called the uh, monthly expense organizer and it breaks it down from January, January to June, that's the first six months. And then you have another breakdown of another expense organizer sheet for the whole year, which is from July through December. Okay? The reason why I put those sheets on the website is for you to give me your business expenses. You only got to deal with this only if you have a business and you have a lot of expenses, which most businesses have. Um, so I try to make it easy for you to do the math. Okay? So in this video, it's not going to take long. I'm trying to make this simple and easy for everybody to do. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fill out the expense organizer to send to me so I can complete your taxes. Okay? Cool. So, somewhere on the page, I'm not exactly sure where it's going to be at, but it should be somewhere on the page. Try to make it easy to find. You'll see the forms. You just download them. There's two forms you got to download. The January through June form is called Monthly Expense Organizer. And the July through December is expense organizer. Download them, print them out, and you might want to make several copies just in case you mess up. Or if you're doing several years, maybe you might want to print out several copies for several years. I don't know. But bottom line, print them out, then PDF form, print them out. And then when you fill this out, I'm going to kind of give you a cheat sheet, so to speak, a cheat sheet on how to fill it out. So let's go over that. Okay, so if you had a form in front of you, hopefully you do. You can either pull it up, print out, whatever. On the top part of the form, it goes over your car expenses. We're going to talk about that, that section first because most people I talk to that have a business normally have a car. So let's start with that. So you see where it says business miles. So for right now, we're going to talk about business miles. Okay. So every year, the IRS normally either raise the miles deduction, sometimes they lower it, but majority of the time they raise it. So, bottom line, I just need to know how many miles you drove. That's business related. So, to make things simple, I broke it down per month. Now, if you know what the number is per year, if you already kind of kept your own records, and you know exactly how many miles you did per year, if you want to just cheat and skip over to the next page, where it says final total, just put the final total on there. I don't need to know how much each month is, but I'm not, I just put that on there for you to try to figure out how many business miles you did per month. So you come up with a calculation of how many miles you did for the whole year. But if you already know what it is, that's business related, great. Put that on there for me. You don't need the whole form, okay? So, but by line, if you want to fill out each month and say, hey, look, I, I probably did do 2,000 miles a month, 500 miles a month, wherever it is, fine. You want to write the numbers on there. If you had the exact number, that would be great. Now, if you have a ballpark figure, because I don't need to see your receipts. I don't need to see your records. At least most of them I don't. And I'll go over what records I, what records and receipts I do need to see. But bottom line, if the IRS will come knocking on your door, they need to see the records. Now, bottom line, I can tell somebody's lying. If somebody tell me, hey, I did 10,000 miles in one month, I'm like, come on now, that don't make sense. That's not normal. Now, if you did, great, but you got to give me a good explanation on why. But most of the time, I know what the numbers are based off of what business you got because I've been doing business returns for years and I pretty much got an idea how many miles you probably did. But bottom line, put the mileage on there for me for each month. So, first one, business miles. Okay? Next one is auto repair. Now, if you don't have a whole lot of auto repair, don't even waste your time. Okay, so most people don't have a lot of major auto repair, and not only that, it ain't like they're trying to fix their car every month. So, bottom line, you might have one or two months 
filled out where you have some major auto repair. And normally, auto repair is normally going to be oil changes. Now, a tax tip, in case the IRS come knocking on your door asking for receipts, what the IRS love is third party. Okay, I'm, I'm giving you a cookie or giving you some extra knowledge. What the IRS love is third party. So what I tell people to do is at the beginning of the year in January or February, beginning part of the year, go get your oil changed at Walmart or some major auto um, replay, auto repair place. You got a lot of these quick oil change places right here. Bottom line, they're going to record your domino reading at the beginning of the year. And then you just make sure at the end of the year, around November, December, you get another oil change at the end of the year to prove to the IRS how many miles you actually drove. Because, like I said, they ain't going to believe you. They believe third party. So if Walmart says for the whole year you did 50,000 miles, and then you come to them and say, hey, out of the 50, I did 25 that's business related, they can say, okay, well, that might make sense based off what type of business you got. Okay? So that's just some extra knowledge for you. So, bottom line, auto repair, you ain't getting your car fixed every month. Hopefully you're not. But bottom line, just plug in how much money you spent on auto repair for whatever much you had. Auto repair, and like I said, most people don't have a whole lot of major auto repair. So I expect that to be kind of empty most months. Gas. Now, most people put gas in their car. <coughs> most people put gas in their car every month, every week. Sometimes every day. It all depends on how far you drive. Now, I don't need the receipts. All I need to know is how much you spent for the whole year if you're going to claim the gas deduction. Now, a lot of people pretty much work from home now because of COVID and all the other stuff that's going on in our lives. So, I'm not really expecting a lot of people to claim gas because a lot of people really don't drive as far as they used to drive because they telework. Or they just ain't going nowhere like they used to before COVID hit. So, gas probably going to be that high. But if you just want to make a reasonable estimate, hey, I spend $50 a week. Oh, hey, I spend $20 a week. Okay, fine. That's a reasonable estimate. Put it on there. So, at least I got an idea of what you're doing. And then your auto insurance. Most people pay auto insurance every month. I already know what most people's auto insurance is. It normally ranges between $50 if the car is old and paid off. So a couple hundred if you got a new car. Okay, fine. I just need to know what it is. Now, to make this easy, because I love making stuff easy, if it's the same amount every month, you ain't got to put the same number. If you want to, you can. Just put whatever times 12, and I know, hey, it's the same amount every month. Because most people's car insurance only changes every three to six months, or maybe a year. Okay, fine. So if it's the same number every month, put whatever times 12, and I got it. Cool. All right, because that bill probably ain't going to change much. Okay, cool. So now we just covered the car section. See how easy that was? All right, let's move on. The next section is utilities. Utilities. All right. So. All right, so what are utilities? Those are the stuff you need to run your business. Most of the time at home. So the, <clears throat> the first section here it says internet and home phone in the world we live in today you pretty much need the internet so most people when i do their taxes i'm pretty much going right off the internet because you can't really communicate without the internet so most people internet bill because i know the numbers i've been doing this for a long time the average internet bill normally ranges between 50 to 100 dollars a month or sometimes it's higher depending on where you live at okay fine and most of the time the internet bill May go up every year because I know they run the special. You might get a discount for a minute, but that change that amount might change six months to a year later. So, bottom line, if it's the same every month, remember, just put whatever number times 12 and it's the same. Okay, fine. We get it. Most, most of your regular utility bills are pretty much going to be the same every month. They might fluctuate a little bit, but they're pretty much going to be the same. Okay? Cell phone. Same thing with your cell phone bill. Most of the time, the cell phone bill is the same every month. I know what cell phone bills normally cost. I got one myself. Cell phone bill normally ranges between $50 to $200 a month, depending on what your plan is. That normally don't change unless you get a new phone or switch services. Okay, fine. If that's the same, put whatever times 12. Okay? Cool. Try to make this easy and simple. 
Okay, now, like I said before, if you already know what the final total is, just put the final total on there, save me some time. Next one, wireless internet. Now, some people have wireless internet on their phone, or they might have a, a MiFi. That's the little internet thing that you use to connect devices when you're mobile. I got one because I travel a lot. Mine is with Verizon. It averages be about $100 a month. So, if you got one of those, great. If not, don't worry about it. <coughs> you got to fill it up. Next section. See how easy that was? Next section. Travel. Now, if you go out of town do business like I do, I travel pretty much, if not every month, every other month, because I got customers all over the country. So, sometimes when I'm traveling, I go see them. Or, I might meet somebody out of town and do some business. I do that a lot. Okay? So, the first deduction under travel and meals is business meals at home. Now, because we live in a world, like I said, a lot of people work from home, and you probably eat at home. So, the way the rules are, if you're doing business, like I do a lot of Zoom calls. I do at least one or two Zoom calls a week with my customers and with other people I do business with. While I'm doing the Zoom call, sometimes I eat. Okay? And then, sometimes, if I have people in my house, I'm eating with them too. And guess what? We talk business. It happens a lot. Okay? When I go to church, some of the folks from church come to my house, and then we fellowship, and guess what? While we fellowshipping at my house that I work at, I have a meal with them. And then guess what? Sometimes we end up talking business. So when we do that, we having a meal and talking business at the same time, that's considered a business meal. Okay? So if you do that, like me, you write that off on your taxes. So if you're at home, we're talking about home for right now. If you're at home and you're on a Zoom call, and you're eating at the same time, before or after the Zoom call, because you got to eat and do business, that's considered a business meal. Okay, now, it's a tip. What I tell people to do is don't eat alone. If you want to write off your meal, don't eat alone. Make sure you eat with somebody, either online or at home, or especially when you go out and you go into a restaurant. We're going to get to that in a second. Don't eat alone, because if you eat alone, you really can't write off the meal. Okay, that's a tip. Next deduction, business meals at a restaurant. So if you go to a restaurant, now, here's the, the issue that most people have because they don't know, and then my job is to educate you. That's why you're watching this video. And let me look at the time. we got seven minutes. We watch the vid watch, that's why you're watching this video. So when you have a meal, uh, like I said, you don't want to eat alone, so make sure you take a friend or somebody you know, and if y'all eat, just make sure you talk business before or after the meal and you can write the meal off as a business meal. That's why I tell people, don't eat alone if you want to write the meal off. Now, if you eat by yourself, you can't write the meal off. Okay? Make sure when you eat with them, when you eat the meal, make sure you're talking to somebody about your business. Okay? Let me give you an example. So, I do taxes and I do credit repair. So when I go out to eat, hey, y'all want to go hang out with me? We're gonna go grab something to eat at Waffle House. Hey, come on, let's go. Let's go eat. Hey, what's going on? We had a nice day at church. Yeah, how's the tax business going? Oh, it's doing great. Hey, you know anybody need to get their taxes done? Oh, yeah, my mama. Okay, great. Now we're right off the mill. Or, hey, how's your kids doing? Oh, they're doing great. Well, you know what? Man, anybody, you know anybody that need help with their credit? Oh, yeah, I do. Okay. Now we can write off the mill. That's how you write off the mill. Or whatever business you're in, if you're in the hair business, hey, you know, anybody need to get their hair done. Okay? See? Easy. All right. So, we're going to do another video on how to record this and, and keep good records. But for right now, we're just trying to keep this simple and put this stuff on a sheet of paper so I can finish your taxes. I just need you to fill this out for me. Okay? Now, we got five minutes. Hotel. Yes. I go out of town at least once every other month, every month, every other month. I stay in a lot of hotels, okay? So, the average hotel bill, because I know, I stay in a bunch of them, it averages between $100 to $200 a night, depending on where you stay, but that's average, okay? So, when you go out of town and you're doing business, you get right off the hotel. So, bottom line, if you're writing off the hotel, I just need to know how many months you did, where you went. Now, I don't really care where you went, what you did. That's for the IRS to ask you if you need receipts. But bottom line, 
I just need to know the amount that you spent, the final total amount. Now, if you want to break it down for month, hey, I went to see mom for Mother's Day in March. Yes, Mother's Day is, I'm sorry, May. Mother's Day is in May. Okay, great. Mother's Day, I went to see my mom. I taught some business, and I tried to get some customers when I was with my mama. Okay, great. I just need to know how much you spent. That's it. That's all I need to know. Tell me what the number is. I can put on your tax return. Okay, and then travel expenses. Now, when you're out of town, sometimes you have to take an Uber. I know when I go out of town sometimes, I'm not driving my car, and I get to the airport, and I got to get to somebody's house, I might have to take an Uber. Well, that's a necessary expense for me to travel, so I'm going to write out the Uber ride. The average Uber ride, because I know, because I pay a bunch of Uber rides. The average Uber ride is normally between $25 to $50 or more, depending on peak season, Okay. They get you based off of how many drivers are available and what time it is. So, I know, because I paid for a lot of Uber rides, okay? Uber rides, um, if you got to take a taxi, whatever it is, or whatever other cost that it need, that you incurred while you travel. Sometimes you might have to get your, cl your, clean, your clothes clean. Sometimes if you stay a couple weeks, yeah, you're going to wash clothes. You might go to a laundromat and wash your clothes. Well, that's necessary. You can write that off, but like I said, that's a whole other video we're going to talk about. But for right now, I'm just helping you fill this out so we can wrap up your taxes. Alright, next section. Business expenses. You got supplies. If you, don't have, if you have a business, you're going to have some supplies. Paper, ink, um, print, well, that's, a, that's equipment. Paper, ink, um, stuff that you're going to use, markers, erasers, stuff that you're going to use. Use up, staples, stuff like that. That's normally going to be, for most people, between a couple hundred to maybe a couple thousand, depending on what business you're in. But normally that's a couple hundred dollars a month. Seminars. If you go to any seminars out of town, how much you have to pay the seminars. Um, membership fees, business gifts, bad debts. Bad debts mean somebody didn't pay your money, and it's, in the business world, it's called a chargeback. Advertising. If you're in business, you probably need to do some type of advertising. That would be business cards, signs, flyers, stuff like that. Commissions, wages, that's the people you pay to work with you, work for you. Office rent, yeah, if you got an office, you still got to pay rent. Yes, that is necessary. Credit card, loan interest, banking fees, charitable contributions. Sometimes, depending on what business you got, you can write off charitable contributions. Okay, yes, because I go to church and I donate to churches. Most of the time when I go, I donate. So, those are the list of things that falls under business expenses. The last section is called business use of home. Now, if you have a business in your home, you get to write off those expenses, but only if you make a profit. Okay? So, I put on here, use only if you have significant income in your business. So, if you totally self-employed, that's what that really means. If you totally self-employed and the only income you got from your business is from your business, yeah, you can write off business use of home. That's it. That's all the time I got for this video. We're pretty much done. As you can see, the list of the utilities that you can write off and if you got a mortgage, your mortgage expenses. But that's it for today. And that pretty much wraps up the form. It's simple. All right. Fill it out for me. Send it to me by fax. Or if you want to email it. Or if you want to just take a picture with your phone. Take a picture and text it to me. Make sure it's clear. I don't care how you get it to me. Just get it back to me so I can finish your taxes. That's it for today. Hey, I appreciate your time. And hey, happy tax season. Talk to you soon.